Kenny, thank you for taking time doing our show today. Well, tell us a little bit more regarding your company and your background and why real estate. Uh, yeah, so uh, we started out in multifamily about six and a half years ago. Uh, in multifamily, we skipped single family altogether. Um, it was it was just too much work. Uh, so multifamily was the way to go. Um, before that, I was in oil and gas, um, uh, working for a small oil and gas operator, and 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 uh, worked my way up to a CFO position at twenty eight. And how how did you how did you start the fund? Did you see some value opportunity that you just decided to form your company? Yeah, we were we actually we were in this uh, in a joint venture on an oil and gas deal, and that and the bigger uh, the bigger um, uh, player in the contract was was having money issues, uh, so it was time to move on to something else, a little bit more stable uh, than oil and gas. So we uh, reached out to some friends, um, talked to a lot of folks, and a lot of them were in, were, were into real estate, so that that got us going. Um, and since then, we've we've been involved in uh, almost 2,200 units, um, 17 properties, and um, and 82 million dollars worth of transactions. So, and how, it's, it's been a good. And how how did you can you run us through your first deal right right from the beginning? What what was the first deal look like? Yeah, so the first deal we bought was a 76 unit property uh, in, in um, there in Wiley, Texas. It's a suburb of Plano, a Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, we bought that. Um, uh, that size was was basically our minimum because we wanted to be able to afford a third party management company to handle all the day to day calls. Right. Um, I still I still don't know the um, all the all the ins and outs of, of of evicting people and all that. I have no idea how to do that. Um, and I and I and, and I never really wanted to. I didn't want to get phone calls for uh, toilets or evictions. I, I you know I'd rather pay someone to do that and focus on building sure. our portfolio. Sure. Uh, so, so so that seventy six unit uh, was the was our first one. Um, it's been a home run. That that, that deal has, has been phenomenal um, uh, for us. So. And and did you get into it was like a, um, equity several equity partners? Can you run us a little bit through the numbers? Yeah. So that um, so that deal we bought for about three point four million. We had to run. We had to um, we had to raise about eight hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars. At that time, that was a lot of money. Um, so I, and I I did have a mentor to kind of push me through the process. Um, cause you are dealing with, um, uh, an extra zero on this real estate. Um, you're also dealing with a lot of other people's money, you know, so, so, so these deals, um, have to work, uh, in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we did. We, uh, we, we had him, he pushed me. I, I thought we could raise, maybe raise 600, $650,000 and, um, uh, but it was good. I, I was, it was good to have that push in the back and say, Hey, just, just go, just go find it. If the deal's good, the money will find you. Uh, was was the mantra there? So, and how long did it take from the initial closing to the to the fi fi finally closing the deal and getting getting the thing done? Uh, so uh, we closed it just under sixty days. Uh, we put it under contract and then and closed within sixty days. And and did, did, did you have like like you you run through like uh, 10, 20, 100, um, 100 deals and then you looked at this is the one to go or did you have like a small chunk in this? It came from came from a referral. How how did you got the whole of that deal? Yeah, so um, this one uh, actually. So when we bought it was it was 2012. So uh, back then the problem wasn't finding good deals. It was finding the financing and the and the and the investor funds. Uh, people were still still a little uh, gun shy about 2008 2009. Sure. Uh, so so back then the, the, there were a lot of deals. So we probably maybe looked at 10 deals, made an offer on this one, and and, and got it. Um, today, that's a whole different story uh, on on how many we have to look at. And and how how does a, a typical uh, ideal deal look look to you? So, what are you looking for when you have a deal across your table? Um, I mean, we we we've, we've done everything from yield plays to value plays. You know, yield ones are the ones you just buy for cash flow. Value would be the big fixer upper. Uh, we've done both. Um, the one that I, I absolutely would love to get uh, is 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 a, is a hybrid. So where it's stabilized. Um, and it's been well taken care of on the exterior, um, but they haven't done any of the interior upgrades um, because that's where you can really push rents. Um, people don't pay you for a new roof or a, or a solid foundation; they pay you for for kitchens and and uh, and uh, and their bathrooms and flooring. You know, so. But you you're talking about the C the C to B space. Is this what is this what you're saying? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we yeah so so we also we mostly play in the B and C space. We've got one I call it an A minus. It's built in 2000. Um, uh, but most of them have been B and C. Uh, we've actually have bought a D, but no one calls it that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
that those that there's no equity build up on, on deep properties is, uh, at least in my my opinion so these, these types of properties that you're looking for you're look is this a cash flow play and you're looking for step stabilized properties or you are fine having like a lower occupancy and then taking care of it after you buy the the, the, um, the deal oh so so we've done both but uh you know, the ideally we'd have one that's stable so we can go get a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan. So those are non-recourse loans. Um, and then once we do our business plan of upgrading half the units, um, go back to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac and get a supplemental loan. Um, so that would be a secondary loan on top of our initial loan to pull our equity out. Um, so we've done that six times now. Five of them, we've returned 100% of the investor's initial equity back to them within 32 months. Um, so it's uh, so that that. That's the method I really like because we, 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 we get to keep the property, but we also have almost all of our money out of the deal as well. So, so but you do, you do the deal that you refi and keep building up towards? Um, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we've done a, re, a full refinance once. The, the majority of the time we do a, um, do, a, do, a, uh, do a supplemental loan with Fannie Mae. So we just put a secondary loan on top of the existing loan. Okay, and how, how long is the typical holding period for you for, for these types of deals? I'm a longer term old guy. I mean, I think if you flip uh, properties, you can make good money, but a lot of your profits are eaten up by taxes and, and also sure. by the broker fees. They're not spread out over multiple years. Um, and also too, you're giving up one of the big, uh, one of the big advantage of real estate is that you be, it's a bit, it's a great tax shield. So if you're, if you're flipping these every two, three years, you're, you're, you're not taking advantage of that tax shield. Um, so I, so that being said, I am more of a long term holder. So I'll tell folks that, you know, five to seven years is our typical hold. Um, sometimes we're, we're selling one um, here in two weeks, um, I guess less than two weeks now, but um, that, that we've hold for just a little over three years. Um, but it was just time to exit that market. I couldn't find any more um, good properties up there at, the, at, a, at a reasonable price. <laughs> so, And re regarding, the, regarding the maintenance and the upkeep, uh, do you have property management in place? Do you outsource? How does that work with you? Um, I, at this point, I only do third-party management companies. Um, I, I, I outsource that. If I if I were to bring that in house, we'd be close um, <laughs> to bring it on house to, to make it run right. Uh, but uh, but we're not there yet. I will, I want to I'd, I'd want to get it up to about three thousand units before we can really um, sit down and think about that. Um, be, just because it, it's that's a whole um, you've got to you've got to hire a whole bunch of folks to to take care of these properties on the day-to-day -day side. So um, for right now, we, we we outsource all the management. Uh, the the reason Kevin, the the reason that we put this this channel together is to help European investors and also every everyone that is abroad to get into the multifamily space in the U.S. And just for you to know, there's there's a, a capital gains tax treatment if you have passive passive income if you if you buy a property that doesn't that doesn't happen in the U.S. but it happens in Europe, and it's in between the 28 and the 40 percent I, I believe in Germany. So if you buy a property and you're using the the guy that is living there to pay pay down the mortgage, you will be subject to 40 percent um, capital gains tax if you live in Germany. So that that makes no sense to me at all. So it makes right. sense to invest in, in a vehicle that is already in place. There's a market already in place, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So the right. whole idea is to to get people uh, on board to do this, but. The first hurdle that, at, le at least in, in hindsight, is if you live in the middle of nowhere, you don't know anyone <laughs> in the U.S. and you're trying to invest, you don't know the, the difference between street A and street B, so you need the eyes and people that you could trust in order to, to do it. So how would you go about and, and, and give your, your best advice if someone is willing to, to go to the U.S. and start pulling the triggers, so to speak, to and start to invest in multifamily properties? Yeah, I mean, I guess the first first piece of advice I was I would say is to really do your homework on the deal sponsor, uh, make sure that they invest alongside you, uh, which we do, um, and make sure that the their uh, compensation is, is aligned with the with the passive investor. Um, some of these deals I'm seeing right now that are being put together by other other folks, um, they're, 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 the deal sponsor compensation makes it so they're the, they're almost never aligned with the investor's interest. Um, so I think that's a big deal. I mean, for us, it's uh, uh, for our, the way we structure it, we're, we're always aligned, and on top of that, we invest money in the deal. Um, so that's that's the first first uh, first thing I would say. Um, I've I've had to rescue two properties from a different deal sponsor that were going south. I had to step in and be voted in and take over and clean them up. And that was that was a lot of it. Is that the deal sponsor just didn't have when 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 the property started to go sideways a little bit, he he didn't reach out. He didn't know who 
how, how to fix it. And so, um, so anyway, so, so that I've, so I learned a lot, uh, saving those two properties. So, um, but you know, d- double check your, uh, the deal sponsor, ask around, um, ask for, um, you know, I, I ask for investors that have invested with them, look at their track record. I would say that that's a number one. And then, uh, number two would be location, I would say. Um, so we only invest in landlord friendly states. Um, so I'll pick on California. It, it, it's, it's really hard to evict somebody in California. It's, it's, you know, I've heard it's three to six months and nine months if they know what they're doing. Um, so which, which if you're, if you're paying your mortgage, um, and it takes nine months for, to, to, to evict someone who's not paying your rent, that's not a good, uh, you know, that's not a good business model. Uh, so, so we typically stay, we, well, we do, we not typically, we, we stay in states that are landlord friendly. Uh, we also look for um, low unemployment, uh, low, low historic unemployment, uh, uh, you know, good population growth historically. Um, and then also too, we there's there's um, there's cities. Uh, I'll pick on uh, I'll, I'll pick on Killeen or, or, or even Midland, but here in Texas, but Killeen is a, it's a smaller city, um, just south of Waco. Uh, but the, the the almost sole economic driver is the military there. There's military bases there. Which nothing against the military, but and and then also like Midland. If, if you're in Midland, you're all based on oil. Um, so if you're, you know, so we're looking for cities that have multiple economic drivers, not just one, because you're you're if you if you invest in those uh, one, one economic driver towns, you're going to go. Your your success is going to be based on the price of oil, or if there's any deployments, you know, things like that. Um, so that's that, that. Those are the big two things I would look for. So, um, you, you're, so you're talking about having low consumer concentration because if you if, you, if that, that makes sense because if you have people that are working blue collar workers that are th- there's only one BMW factory there and the factory closes you right you, yeah that would be that would be good so regarding regarding there's other there's other um, there's other offerings that that you have in your in your company we were speaking about it a little bit before we started the show can you run us a little bit uh, what you have to offer besides this. Yeah, so we've got uh, so so we, so we still do multifamily. We've actually got two deals under contract now, two multifamily properties. Uh, but at the end of last year, we started to branch out. So now we're doing uh, we're also doing hard money loans. Uh, so that's mostly to single family uh, real estate investors and also to um, small multifamily uh, real estate investors as well. Um, and then um, we actually we're about to get into commercial real estate as well. So we've got two. Uh, two commercial properties under LOI right now. So we're starting to build a commercial real estate fund with that. So uh, we'll have 12 months to, to raise money and also 12 months to um, add more properties to this commercial real estate fund. So investors will be spread out over multiple commercial real estate. Um, and then, and that, and that we're less, we're less, um, you know, on, on that I'm, I'm willing to go look in California or other places like that uh, because we won't have to deal with the uh, landlord laws on the, on the residential side. So all the, all of your units, I think I asked you this before, but all the units you you are all about uh, I- within Texas or run us through where do you hold your unit portfolio? Yeah, yeah, sure. So right now we're in Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Ohio. Um, there's um, and we're trying to add um, Indiana as well. I'm, I'm trying to get into Indi- Indianapolis and then um, as well. That's another market we're trying to get into, and then Houston as well. I've been trying to get back into Houston. We we sold our property that we had there about two years ago. Okay, and where, where do you see your, your company in the next in the next couple of years? Sounds like you have everything under control and looking to expand. Where, where do you see your company heading in the next couple of years? Uh, so we're really growing. Uh, we are. Uh, we've got a good office staff here now to help us out with the behind the scenes uh, stuff, paperwork, and all that kind of thing. And we've got an asset manager that helps me out when I can't travel to visit the properties as well. So we're really growing there. Um, we actually had two interns this summer too, so that was fun. Uh, but um, the, but yeah, we're growing. Uh, the whole goal has always been to be a, a well-rounded investment firm, not just real estate and, and not just multifamily. So uh, we're really starting to add that. So we're starting to add, you know, now we have the hard money and the loans. That's a, we can have debt investment options for our investors. Uh, multifamily, we're getting into commercial real estate. So we're really starting to branch out um, and be a full-service investment firm. So let's let's say today you got, you got a hold of a new client. You have a European investor, the listener that likes what he hears so far. So they want us to invest with you. Run us a little bit regarding the process uh, for for this for this new client that you will be having. Yeah, sure. So we've got we've got a few overseas folks um, that have invested with us. What 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 my SEC attorney has has told me is the the easiest way um, is for them to create a U.S. entity, so an LLC or LP, however they want to set it up, whatever's easier for them regarding their 
um, their 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 nationality, status, and all that kind of stuff. But um, so we've got a few folks that have done that. So they created a U.S. entity that has invested in um, in, in some of our multifamily properties. Um, and by doing that, it it, it streamlines the it streamlines the taxes and 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 all that on, on my side. So. <laughs> And and th this process will be uh, rather easy, or it's a little bit on the red tape. In um, for, for uh, it's it's pretty easy uh, to set up a Texas LLC. Um, there, I've, um, the one the the few investors, most of them have done a Texas um, LLC as the entity. Um, it's pretty inexpensive to do. I think you can get it done for less than a thousand dollars. So it's 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 fairly easy, and it, uh, they can do it usually within about oh, two weeks or so. And regarding regarding the properties that that you buy, how would the investors know regarding new deals that you have on on the table? Do you do you send like do you have login access? Do you send them some emails? How does that process work? Right. Yeah. So what we do, um, uh, we what we'll do is um, um, so so folks would have to email me uh, at our email address at uh, info at wolf and that's w o l f e hyphen r e dot com. Um, and then once we do that, we can we can um, we can have either a, a Skype call or some kind of um, uh, phone call um, to to you know cause, because I really like to get to know my investors first before we sure. you know do business together. Sure. Um, and once we do that, uh, what we'll do is we'll send we'll email out a link, um, and so in that link you can opt in to get our investment offerings. And so um, so we just sent out maybe two weeks ago um, the um, the first uh, the first. The first emails to, to folks that, that had opted in uh, to those um, to our investment offerings for the latest three we've got, um, and so once they do that, um, we've got that in, that list now. So folks that said they were interested in one, two, or all three properties, um, and then um, what we'll do is in about two to three weeks um, after they receive that um, initial email uh, with some pretty you know some general information, um, they'll get a PPM, a private placement memorandum. Um, and that includes a um, the company agreement, which talks about the rules and all that, and what we vote on, what we don't vote on, uh, things like that. It's got the subscription agreement, uh, which is mostly just telling me how many shares you're going to be buying of the of this new LLC that we set up, um, your address, your mailing address, your tax ID number, things like that. Okay. Uh, and then then also too, we we throw in there a whole bunch of like, there's an investment summary that that's a 20 page PDF that talks about um, the property. It's got lots of pictures. It shows the the debt that we're looking at to get um, the um, so the projected uh, returns as well in there. And then uh, it also has the information that shows that we really did set up a new entity. Um, it proves all that information as well. So um, we're very uh, we're very um, uh, transparent here. Uh, I, I, I like educated investors. And then after that, once we once you have invested, you'll get um, um, the first month or two, you'll get a, a, an email every other week um, with some updates. And then we'll go to a monthly uh, email, which I'll, I'll have a big email right up myself. And then we attach about an 80 to 120 page PDF that walks you through the income statement, the balance sheet, cash flow statement, um, rent roll. I mean, all, you know, all, all kinds of information. And regarding regarding the, the distributions, how does that how does that work? You have a preferred return, you have an equity split. How does the process work? Uh, we just do an equity split, uh, and because because I want this, to, I've always wanted this to be more of a partnership um, deal. So you know, if the if the property does well, uh, we do well. If it doesn't do well, then I don't do well, and that's that's I think the best way to do it. Um, so we don't, yeah. So it's just a, it's a straight eighty twenty split of profits. Um, there's no acquisition fees. There's no preferred returns. There's no waterfalls. We just keep it simple. Um, and and again, we're, we're we're we we invest alongside our investors, so we're always aligned with our uh, investors as well. Can it, people they they went on a fight for a while. <laughs> they have a couple of scars for running through the process. Can you run us through a couple of one of the worst mistakes you, you have made, and one of the things that you keep telling yourself, "I'm not going to do that ever again." Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we, we you know, we, uh, we, we got started in a, in a very good time. Buying in 2000, you know, late 2010 was our first multifamily investment. So we've had really good timing on all this. But uh, we have learned a lot. Um, the, 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 two, the two rescue projects, I'll call them, um, were the things that where I learned the most, uh, where that deal sponsor really, really screwed things up. I mean, he, um, uh, so for example, he was, um, the property that, that we were invested in, it was, um, I was a passive in the deal. Um, and then he, uh, he was, he was the deal sponsor and the initial deal sponsor, but he was giving away a cruise, um, to, 
uh, to folks if they signed or you know uh, if they, if they signed a new lease. Um, the problem is that 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 property was in a you know C class um, um, part of town, so they couldn't afford probably to drive to Houston, let alone take a week off to go on a cruise. So I mean, you know, what kind of you've got to really um, uh, uh, you know a market to your demographic that 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 you're in. You can't, and then also too, you know, some of the stuff he was doing, he was over improving the property. Um, you know, he was trying to do stainless steel packages in a C C plus C class area, which you just can't do that. They can't afford it. So, you know, you got to stick with the white and black appliance. So it's, it's stuff like that where it's, it's not rocket science. You just got to know, um, you know, if you're buying a C class that you only do C class improvements. Um, and then, you, you know, if it's, if you're buying a C class, your, your goal is to, to, to provide, you know, functional, clean, um, you know, housing for blue collar or in a uh, uh, blue collar folk, you know? Um, so as long as you know wh- where you're at in the world, and what demographic you're you're pitching to? You know, it's it's not it's not rocket science. And that that, that makes sense because if you if you uh, go over the top on each unit, that pretty much adds up, and you pretty much shoot yourself in the foot because if you are doing a a type amenities on a C type property, that doesn't make sense at all. And multiply it by uh, several units, one hundred plus units, you have a big problem. Yeah. There. So that makes That's sense. And regarding the, uh, the other way around, w- one of your, your best deals, you talked about your first one, but run us through one of your best deals and why. Um, all right. I mean, so I'll, 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 well, I think we'll just stick with the first one. I mean, they've, they've all done pretty well. We've all, um, so far, we've doubled everybody's money in, um, in less than three years. Um, now, you know, part of that is us and part of that's the market too. So we can't take full, full, uh, you know, full, um, full responsibility there, but, uh, but we have pushed hard and, and we've gotten, you know, we've improved our bottom lines, um, as fast as we could. We've also had, um, lower cap rates that help us out too. So, uh, but, uh, that being said, I mean, I, the, the, the best thing you can do is, is, um, you know, you make your money when you buy the property. Um, if, if you overpay on a property, it's, that's one of the sins you can't overcome in multifamily. If you underpay or pay a reasonable, reasonable price, um, then, then, then you can make a few mistakes and still be okay. Um, so that's, that, that's the biggest deal. So your basis is a huge deal. If you can buy these at a lower, at a lower price, um, somehow, some way, um, than what the current market's paying, then you're going to be of the long term, you're going to be in a much better position. Um, I, so, I, I've seen I've seen companies that don't do very well uh, sometimes because they suffer from this analysis paralysis thing. They they take too long to to analyze a deal and then everything goes south because they they paralyze basically. So how long does it usually take you you and your team to say you have you have a deal and pretty much ready to go after you run through the numbers? How how long does it usually take for you to to pull the trigger? Uh, it takes us initially on the initial underwriting about ten to fifteen minutes. <laughs> um, we can, you know, we've got a, we've got a, we've got an analysis spreadsheet that, um, that, that I've cleaned up and, and, and now it's, it's, it's very streamlined. Um, so within 10, 15 minutes we're, we know if we're, you know, we're, we know it's a, we know it's a rough, um, analysis, but, but we'll know what, you know, but it's, it's pretty accurate. We'll, um, uh, what we'll do is we'll get, so once I do that, um, I go back to the broker and, uh, and talk to him and say, and see if I'm, and see if we're within 90% of the, of the price they want. Um, if, if we're, if we're ninety percent or less um, uh, within that price, then we make an offer. We, we then we go do a, a little bit more in-depth analysis. Um, if we if if we're not, then we move on to the next one. It's just you know it's just not worth our time. And, and these these deals you typically get them from brokers, and they are off market, right? Um, I mean, it, it really depends. We've, most of ours have been on market, um, but that being said, the past eighteen months we've been focusing on off market deals that are. Um, that have deferred maintenance or have management issues because that's a way for us to get a lower price per unit. I'm all about the basis. Uh, you've got to have that low. Um, otherwise, you, you know, it's, it's really tough on you. So, um, so that, that, that's what we've been focused on the past 18 months is our off-market deferred maintenance uh, deals. Uh, back in, you know, 2010 to 2013, I'd even say we were buying deals on, on market and, 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 the, and we were paying a fair price. It wasn't a, we, we, you know, it was a, it was a fair deal. Um, but now with prices, you know, at the peak or near the peak, um, you got to be really careful today. Okay. But do, do you still see some opportunities in the markets that you are at or do you see them kind of scarce and, and try to look for other markets? 
Uh, I mean, there's always, de- I mean, no matter when, when you're in the cycle, um, you, there's always deals out there. It's just a little bit harder to find them these days. So we had to probably look at a hundred, uh, unit or hundred properties, um, to, to find, you know, maybe 10 that we offer on and we might get one of them these days. Um, that wasn't the case a few years ago, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, the, the, the two we have now, um, it was on market, but it didn't sell. Um, so we came back in and, and offered a, a, a fair price and, um, on one, on, on one of those. And the other one was an off market deal. Uh, wasn't very well marketed. It, there was it well, let me say that back. It was a, it was a very small broker that marketed it. Um, and they weren't getting much traction. So we made an, uh, we made a, a fair offer, um, on that deal. Kevin, regarding, regarding reading habits, as you know, I sent you my book list. I'm, I'm a bookworm. I see that that's the only way to get ahead is start learning and then starting to pull the trigger. So run us through a couple of your books, so, so favorite books you have. Yeah, uh, I, I like that. I'm a, I'm a big reader too. I try to read at least 10 minutes a day, uh, at least. Uh, so, um, you know, I mean, really anything with the, with the business background or anything related to business, I'll read. Um, uh, so, but some of my favorites, like I wrote them down here. Um, I, the, the ones that kind of really got me going were Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's probably one you hear a lot. Um, and then the second one would be Un- Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. Um, that was a big book. I, I think I credit that one for really helping me buy my first deal. Um, you know, kind of get out of my own way with the mindset portion of it. Um, and then there's a lot of others too that like uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, um, Richest Man in Babylon by George Classen. Um, and then buying and selling apartment buildings by Steve Burgess as well is a good one. Uh, but there's a lot out there. Like right now, I'm currently reading the Jobs um, or the, the the Steve Jobs biography. Um, I, I read the I read the biography on the uh, the guy from Starbucks. So really, I'll read any kind of business background uh, book. Uh, but then also too, I'm a big Warren Buffett. Fan. Um, so I'll, I'll, any any book related to Warren Buffett, I'll read. So that's a good um, that's a good indicator. <laughs> that's yeah. a really good indicator. Uh, where, where can I help listeners get a hold of you and get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. So our um, our website is www.wolfwolfe-re.com. And then the email would be at, at it's info, I-N-F-O, at wolf, W-O-L-F-E-R-E.com. Okay, Kevin, it was wonderful having you with us today. See you, see you sometime around. That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.